Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Tchaikovsky and I'm back with my plans and pans. So the White House has estimated that here in Illinois, there are about 2,400 bridges and about 6,200 roads that are in really poor repair. And that's why it's really good news for us here in our state that we have the infrastructure bill that is going to be signed into law on Monday. And I'm so happy that I got invited to the White House for the um, signing ceremony where the president is actually going to make it law. So Illinois is going to see at least $17 billion in investment here in our state. A lot of that can go to roads and bridges and mass transportation. And a lot of it is going to go to something very important for our state, which is we have a lot of lead pipes. Um, and these uh, service lines that go into the house that carry water and that are lined with lead, we are the number one state in the country that has, the, have those lead, has those lead service lines. And so it's gonna be really a big deal that we're gonna be able to have money to replace them. There's also gonna be the extension of broadband and for low income, income communities, there's gonna be more access to the internet. So this is going to be um, really important for um, our, not only Illinois in general, but for many of our communities that have been seeing a need for infrastructure that has been under invested in for really decades in, uh, in the United States. Um, and it's really about time that we'll do that. And in addition, we're talking about creating literally millions of, of new jobs. I also wanted to tell you about a bill that we passed last week that I wanted to mention that's particularly important for older workers. Um, it's called the Protect Older Job Applicants Act um, because we have seen that um, up to 78% of older people who have applied for jobs, who are working in jobs, have actually seen or experienced themselves age discrimination. You know, we've had a, a law on the books since 1967, the Age Discrimination Employment Act, um, and, and yet we know that this still exists. And so this legislation would increase enforcement or increase investigation to make sure, um, because when people are, are living longer, working um, better and stronger, um, want to be in the, in, in the workplace, often need to be in the workplace uh, longer, and uh, are actually turn out to be at least as reliable, more reliable than many uh, people in the, in the workforce. So if you're an employer, think about that, making sure you're not engaging in age discrimination because you want a really good employer that has some life under their, under their belt. Um, and we certainly want the law to be obeyed. So um, we're gonna try and make that happen in a, in a stronger way. So this is the week that the House of Representatives is going to pass what we call the Build Back Better Bill, the Reconciliation Bill, that only Democrats have to uh, vote for that. And as I mentioned to you last week, we do have an agreement that we're gonna get the votes that we need finally to pass that, that legislation. I've talked to you uh, a lot about it, but I wanna mention this. There's been talk about so much concern about inflation. I get it, you know, we, none of us like to see the prices go up, but one of the beauties and the advantages of the Build Back Better bill is that it actually will lower costs. You will see that for childcare, people can't afford it, you know that, um, the, it's going to be affordable. M most Americans are going to be able to pay no more than 7% of their income on childcare. That's, that's really huge. Um, we're going to have the child tax credit that is absolutely going to help people save money. Um, we're going to um, see that uh, a dramatic lower lowering of the cost of healthcare, especially in Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act on the exchange. 
dramatic is uh, the, the word, um, for states that you know didn't expand Medicaid, um, there's going to be money around the country for those people through the Affordable Care Act. And elder care, um, as I've lamented many times, we don't have a long-term care policy in this country, but uh, 100, uh, $150 billion is going to go for Medicaid-based home and community-based services, which will be a big help. Um, and both child care and elder care are going to mean that a lot of women in particular are going to be able to go back to work. So that's an additional bonanza. But I think the, the idea that we're going to uh, be able to lower costs, I think, is really important, especially as we are hearing all the worries about uh, inflation. This will, this will really help. And finally, this bill has about a half a trillion dollars for the climate crisis. We've certainly been hearing a lot about the international meeting on climate and all the concerns that um, are being voiced everywhere about uh, being able to lower carbon emissions. And this will really help the United States meet its commitments, which it has made at the, at the conference, and also um, just to help us stay in the uh, the limit um, so that so that we have a livable planet for our children and for our and for our grandchildren so this is the time that you can make changes in your health care plan for next year um, if you are on the not on the exchange um, you can enroll you can find out what's available for you you can go through all the different plans and enroll for the first time. If you are already on the healthcare exchange, then you can change your plan. Make sure because you know sometimes there are changes in those plans, and you want to make sure that uh, even if you like your plan right now, that there aren't changes um, that you need to know about. the The good news is that uh, we are going to see a reduction in in premiums, so that's a really good thing. Um, so everybody should, this is, this is the time to check. One of the easiest ways is if you go to getcoveredillinois.gov. That's the, uh, the, the, the uh, website that you can go to where you can start your uh, application or you can find out answers to the questions that, uh, that you have. So. Or you can actually call our office as well. We can help you navigate that, that plan. It's also the time for Medicare um, and you, it changes. And so you want to, for example, your Medicare Part D plan, the prescription drug plan, you really need to look at it. You may think everything is great now, all your drugs are covered. You wanna make sure though. So for Medicare or for your exchange, um, you can call my office too at 773-506-7100 um, and, and at, say that you need help either with the exchange or with your Medicare to make sure that your benefits are right and that you get the best deal, especially on your medication on Medicare Part D. Last week, there was a vote in the Senate with a very disappointing but not totally surprising outcome. This was the John Lewis Voting Right Advancement Act. You know, under Trump, there were some terrible changes in the Voting Rights Act um, that made it easier for states to be able to suppress the, the vote. This would have been, had restored the um, voting rights that John Lewis fought and nearly died for in the 1960s to make sure that everyone had the right to vote. So um, Chuck Schumer, the uh, head of the uh, Democrats in the Senate, he called the, uh, he called the vote. So when the vote finally happened, only one Republican, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, voted uh, in favor of the uh, John Lewis and, uh, Voting Rights Advancement Act. Um, but you know, in the United States Senate, it doesn't just take a simple majority. You need 60 votes to pass a bill. I know a majority in the, is really 50 
one votes of the 100 members of the United States Senate, but you know, the filibuster makes it required an extra, an extra 10. We weren't even close. Um, and I think part of the idea really of uh, Schumer calling the, the bill was to show that we aren't going to get the Republicans to support voting rights in our country right now, as long as we have the filibuster. So I've been uh, certainly hopeful, hopeful that we could just get rid of it but at the very least do a carve out for votes that deal with our fundamental democracy like the like the right to uh, like the right to vote one of the really exciting things for me anyway that i did this week um, was to go to my alma mater sullivan high school in rogers park i've been very close to sullivan high school ever since i graduated that from there a million years ago and, uh, and very interested in where Sullivan is right now. A book was just written about Sullivan High School called Refugee High that uh, talks about how uh, at Sullivan High School there are about 40 languages spoken. People that come, students that come from all over the country uh, with, their, with their families. Um, it is one of the most, maybe the most diverse school in the Chicago public schools and a welcoming place for refugees. But it also, you know, it's, a, it's seen as most um, CPS schools have a, a decline in enrollment. So it's a, it's a beautiful school. I think it's even prettier than when I was there. It's looking great. Um, that is uh, about 600, uh, 600 students, um, which means that classes are small and, and that's a, a good thing. Well, one of the ways that I wanted to promote Sullivan High School to help with partnerships outside of the school was to bring and suggest, uh, actually he suggested to me after I was bragging about Sullivan, the president of the University of Illinois, uh, Dr. Tim Colleen, who is just a wonderful, wonderful educator and leader. By the way, they haven't raised their tuition, I think it's the last six, maybe even seven, seven years. They're really trying to keep the costs reasonable. Um, he's the president for Chicago, the um, University of Illinois in Chicago, um, Champaign-Urbana, where I graduated from. I'm an alum from there as well. And, and then in Springfield. So there's three places that it's located. Anyway, so I had talked to him about Sullivan High School and he said, I'd really like to go. I said, well, that's great. We'll set it up. So he came, but he also bought a busload of the top staff at, uh, at the university to meet with some students, to meet with the principal, um, Chad Adams, who is just a, an amazing, amazing leader. Also there um, was the new head of the CEO of the Chicago Public Schools, Pedro Martinez, has only been five weeks uh, on the job. So I'm so happy that one of his first school visits now was to, to Sullivan High School. And they were talking to the students about the kinds of programs that can begin in high school that will prepare them for careers, um, not just jobs, but really good jobs and really good careers as they go forward to uh, bring them to the University of Illinois um, for um, the CEO Martinez um, to be able to help advance some specialized programs at Sullivan High School. So it was great to be with the, uh, the students, always uh, a joy. You know, I graduated with a degree from the University of Illinois in elementary education, so that's really my background. And now I am doing everything I can to help these, uh, these students, many of whom face special talent challenges. I think I've talked about that once, how they often come from places that have seen severe violence, where they've witnessed that, the deaths and murders of 
people in their family or their friends or they've been in refugee um, camps and you know come with a lot of trauma but also they may be the only one in their family that speaks English so they have a lot of additional responsibilities that other adolescents don't um, have and, and don't really have to think about anyway I love Sullivan go Tigers um, also wanted to tell you, speaking of education, some good news about um, student loan forgiveness. Now, some of you may have applied and actually been rejected from the um, Public Service Student Loan Forgiveness Program. Um, I heard from people in the, in the district that uh, they actually had been um, denied from, they applied and, and, and denied. There is now a review going on right now of these applications um, and you know we're hoping that you may be among them the people that find relief this week um, 10,000 borrowers uh, received over 215 million dollars not each of course all together um, in um, relief from student loans and uh, we understand um, that uh, there's more to come about another 20,000 borrowers will receive for forgiveness. Now, um, in my, uh, if you go onto the link in my newsletter, you can find out more information, where to find out the information about whether you are eligible now for this loan forgiveness, or you, uh, once again, can call the, uh, the office for assistance. Back to the coronavirus for a little bit. So, you know, um, today, Friday, November 12th, Chicago schools actually just spent the day, no classrooms, in order to, for parents and students to come and, uh, and, and get vaccinated. I haven't gotten reports yet about the, uh, the, the turnout, but I'm hoping that anyone who was not vaccinated took advantage of that opportunity. So right in their neighborhood, right in their community to, uh, to, go, get, uh, to go get vaccinated. Um, the Biden administration also just rolled out the requirements for getting vaccines. If you are in a company that employs more than 100 people, um, you're supposed to be vaccinated. You have to be vaccinated. That is a, a, a new requirement. Um, and this actually means that uh, tens of millions of Americans who are working will be subject to that, uh, to that requirement. And um, then we know, unfortunately, the cases once again are rising in Illinois um, as uh, people are congregating more indoors. You know, when the weather gets colder, um, the exposure, of course, gets greater because people spend less time outside, which, as you know, is, uh, is much safer. So we're seeing somewhat of an increase since last Friday. We've seen 22,600 um, new coronavirus um, cases, 129 um, deaths. Um, the, the new cases represent 20, uh, 29% increase over the uh, the previous week. So please be careful. Um, indoors, wear a mask. Certainly if you're going into any place of business and to any public building and to any building to to, to wear a mask. But uh, you know consider it even even when you're uh, among friends. If you go to restaurants unless you're at the moment of eating and drinking, you want to uh, wear a mask. I um, met some people for um, breakfast this morning. I wore a mask into the restaurant as I was seated um, until my food came um, and then, you know, took my, my mask off and then replaced it as I, as I left. You know, I don't have to tell you, I'm not meaning to lecture, but we have to do everything we can to the, make those numbers go down because we want to be able to enjoy the, uh, the, the holiday season. So I saw a little bit of uh, snow or was it sleet through my uh, window today? Um, and you know, it's getting, it's getting colder. So um, stay warm and I will see you next week. 
Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.